how do you develop a company that is great? That's the question we're going to be looking at today through Good to Great by Jim Collins. So Jim Collins is was an already famous author by the time he decided to embark upon the research project that then turned into writing this book. He built or he wrote the book Built to Last, which is about how you create a company that has great strong principles that last a very long time. And then he was talking with some people and realized that he was missing out on how do you transition a good company into a great company. The principles in Built to Last could not really be applied to a company that wasn't brand new. So he decided uh, to write this book, Good to Great, about how you take a good company to a great company. Now that might not be uh, very useful to a lot of you guys because I doubt many of you are running very large, good companies. But this book had a ton of applications for taking your personal life from good to great or any kind of business or uh, even your job. If you want to move from being good in your job to great in your job, these uh, principles in good to great are something that you should absolutely apply in your life. So the first one is level five leadership. Of course, you don't know what that is because it is a term that he created while researching and writing this book. But basically, a level five leader has all the skills you would think of as a you know a natural leader: uh, good looking, charismatic, you know, sacrifices for his people, um, able to motivate people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what a level five leadership leader has that most leaders don't have is they aren't selfishly motivated. So a level five leader cares more about what he's creating than about himself. And you would compare CEOs from level five CEOs from a good to great company versus uh, charismatic CEOs from a company that spiked up under that leadership and then fell back down after that leader left. So the level five leaders, they had sustained growth after they left. And that was because they really cared about the company more than they cared about themselves. And they were willing to put everything they had into the company into developing it. And these people were also humble. So they didn't care about the fame and the prestige. Now don't get me wrong, they were well paid and very successful, but they were a little less quote unquote famous than some of these CEOs that caused the company to spike up and then crash after they left. And that was because that these level five leaders didn't search for you know recognition. They wanted their uh, meaning and their purpose to come from creating a truly great company. So it's a little something to think about there. If you want to be a great leader, humility and, and pouring into what you're creating instead of into yourself is, is a good way to do that. So the second thing that these very successful companies did is they actually focused more on who than on what. So this company is going through this transition phase. That's generally what started um, the transition from good to great. They didn't focus on what we're going to do. They weren't like, oh, you know, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and we're going to then fit people to that. They went out and they found great people. They based their decisions on character, you know, how hardworking that person is, how honest they are, and whether they felt that that person would fit within their culture or the ideas that they wanted to go to. But then they developed the specific ideas of what they would do next. So it was more of get a great group of people together and then decide on what to do instead of deciding on what to do and then trying to pull in peace in people to do that. And that kind of makes sense when you think about it. If you want to see where your company is going to go in the future, it would be better to have 10 amazing people making that decision than you making that decision alone and then trying to pull people in to that idea. So for something to apply to your own personal lives, I think often we're going to be questioned with uh, things on what to do, you know, whether it's running a business, oh, what should I do for my business or, or just personal decisions. And that the first thing you should really focus on in your life, at every new stage of your life or business or whatever, is who should I be surrounding myself with? You know, let's say you move to a new city. Um, you're going to be faced with the situation of you know, where do I live, what do I do, um, etc. But the first thing you should do is go join a great church there or a great you know leadership committee and, and find people who are going to help you make those decisions, help you be successful. Obviously, if you're running a business, even if it's a startup, get the great people together, say, hey, I want to start a business, and pull those people together, and then you guys together, and then make those tough decisions, and you'll be much more informed, and you will be better with those decisions. Um, then the third thing that companies did on this transition from good to great was to really confront the most difficult facts. There's going to be hard things in your life. There's going to be hard things if you want to build a business or or transition a business, but you have to confront the most difficult, most brutal facts 
head on if you want to be able to um, change them. But at the same time as you confront those brutal facts, you're going to want to have faith. You can't lose, you're not looking at these facts like, oh no, I'm going to fail. You could be looking at some messy facts, you know. Let's say that you realize you're like, crap, I just watched this video and my life is in a tough spot. Um, you don't want to lie to yourself and tell you that your life is not in a tough spot. Your life might be in a terrible place. But <clears throat> you have to confront those facts with faith that you can change your situation. You know, you can, you're, you're watching a video like this, so you're five minutes into a video about reading. Um, you know, you can keep continuing to do things like this and can keep continuing to develop skills, but uh, don't avoid the hard facts, but also don't lose faith that you will be successful. And that is what these companies did, is, is they confronted the most difficult facts with a faith that they would be successful. And then the f uh, fourth step here is what they called the hedgehog uh, principle. And the hedgehog principle was when they finally were deciding on what we are going to do with our companies, they <clears throat> made sure that it fit within three, uh, three categories. And it's the hedgehog principle because it fits within the categories of passion, something you, you're passionate about, you enjoy, um, something that will make you money, and something that you can be the best in the world at. And when you combine those three things together, something you enjoy, something you can be very good at, and something that makes you money, you are then able to pour all your resources into that one thing instead of being all over the place and being incredibly successful uh, in that one direct area. And that is what these companies did, is they focused on one thing. I think that's a great principle to apply to your life. You know, don't be all over the place. Focus on being really, really good at one thing. Now, there are other skills that you're going to need to develop. You know, like you can be a great engineer, but you need to learn how to talk to people. Um, and, you know, you're going to need to develop your faith and develop your spirituality so that you can be happy. But when it comes to, you know, your business, your success, I think you need to really hone in on doing one thing incredibly well. And you, you're going to have secondary skills that back that up but they should all be filtered through that ultimate goal, that ultimate uh, purpose. And then finally, uh, the good to great companies created a culture of discipline. Now, when compared to the not great companies, the difference was that there were lots of rules and regulations to set up discipline at these other companies versus in the good to great companies, they created a culture where people disciplined themselves, people wanted to be hardworking. So that came, went all the way back to that leader who led from the front lines, and you had the who, you know, they were, they were going to get people who had character versus skills and then teaching them the skills. Then, you know, you're confronting these brutal facts that's building character, building discipline, you're doing something you enjoy. And finally, that creates this culture of discipline where, you know, I, as employee X, regulate employee Y, and I regulate myself, and our manager, you know, we're regulating him, and he's regulating us, and, and it, it's this culture where we want to be successful, we want to be disciplined, and we want to do a great things with this company. Of course, you can apply that to your life, you know. If you're set on a purpose and you have great friends, you're gonna, you're gonna be disciplined in your actions, and you're not gonna, you know, be in a situation where you're not doing things because you're afraid of the law or the church or whatever punishing you. You're gonna be doing good things because that is an intrinsic motivation for you to always do the best. So if you want to be great, you have to have that and develop that discipline within yourself. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I tried to you know make a little metaphor here between this business book and your life, and I hope that I uh, blurred the lines a little bit so that you could apply some of those principles to be better yourself. It's certainly something I'm going to try doing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And if reading is knowledge and knowledge is power, then reading is power. Thanks so much. Bye.